Welcome back everybody. Today we'll be answering this question. Which is the correct angle between the radial vector and the tangent line? So in the previous video we had, we defined tangent phi as the ratio between r and the derivative of r with respect to theta. So in this picture this is actually the correct angle of, of phi and it's not this angle over here. This is not the correct angle of phi. So in this video I'm going to try to explain which angle is the correct angle. So in the derivation, we looked at the change in r and the change in theta. And we said if we let the initial vector, because the particle is moving in this direction, if we let the initial vector be constant and let it rotate with its rotational motion, we're going to say that this vector is going to create some sort of arc along the path. And if we let delta theta, this is going to be delta theta, if we let delta, delta theta go to zero, then we're going to create this right triangle that exists right here. So this is going to be the right triangle. So we define that right triangle as follows. And the reason why this creates a right angle with this change in r, so this is going to be the change in r, and this is going to be the change in length, so we can define those real quick. And the reason why this is, creates a right angle, because as delta s or as delta s approaches zero or delta theta goes to zero, this curve or this arc gets more and more straight and more and more perpendicular to the change in R. So that is why we're gonna say at the limiting case, we're gonna have this right triangle with the side lengths of delta R and delta S. And we could create a relationship between these angles by saying this is going to be phi. And if you look at this picture, so this is gonna be our right triangle right here. And we can say that this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. And then what we can do is use the idea of vertical angles to prove that this angle is the correct angle that we're looking at. So you might be wondering, well, that's actually dependent on delta r because if the particle moves in this direction, then the orientation of the triangle is actually flipped. So I drew the same graph, so to speak. The concavity is still the same. So technically it's the same path, although it's a little bit more curved. Uh, but this is basically the same problem, but instead, the particle is moving in this direction instead of the other direction. So let's apply that same concept. So let's say we keep this radius right here constant. We're, it's going to create an arc that looks something like this. So this right here, if we extend this radius over here, this is actually the change in R. So like what we did before, we can actually create a right triangle in the limiting, limiting case where this right here is delta s and this right here is delta r. And as we said earlier, we define tangent phi as r dr d theta, or with in terms of the arc and the change in radius, we define that as delta s over delta r. So let me draw out that triangle so we can see where phi exists in this diagram. Since we did find phi in terms of the ratio between delta s and delta r, we can say that this angle right here is going to be phi. So let's say we have a tangent line to the path like in the previous picture. So since we define this angle phi right here, that must be the same angle right here. And if we extend that radius, that angle phi is actually the same angle as before. So if you look at this diagram over here, this right here is the same kind of angle as before. So what that means is that the rotation tendency of the object or the particle does not affect the angle at which it makes with the tangent line and the radius. So it could be either going this way or this way. The angle itself is always going to be the same angle. Now we're going to look at if the angle changes if the curve changes concavity. So maybe a particle goes in that direction or maybe a particle goes in this direction. So we're gonna see if the concavity actually changes up the angle. So in these previous diagrams, we look at the triangle in this case and the triangle in this case. And what we can do is actually create a parallelogram between these two triangles in a limiting, limiting case. So what we can say is that this is gonna be some arc. So this is gonna be the path of a particle. And then we're gonna create this right triangle. So that'll look something like this. So this will be delta R. And this right here will be delta s. And if we can create a parallelogram with these two lines. So we could create a parallelogram with these two lines. So this is this right here is going to be delta r. So this right here is delta r, and this is delta r. And they share the same 
arc length, which is delta s. And if we let delta s go to zero, what we're going to get is this parallelogram. So in the very, very small case, just before delta s approaches zero, what we're going to get is this shape, where delta s curves very, very slightly. So we could say that this right here is actually the tangent line to the curve. So this right here will create a right angle. This is going to be delta r and this is going to be delta s. And this side of the parallelogram will be actually the other graph with the other concavity. So this will be delta r. And we can actually create the vertical line because this will be the radial direction. And then if we switch concavity, this is actually going to be the other radial direction. And this is going to be the tangent line. So therefore, this angle right here is phi and this angle right here is phi. And this angle right here is phi and this angle right here is phi. So you may be still a little confused on why we're doing this. So the reason why I'm doing this is actually relate the, the concept of, of phi with the concavity of the curve. So let's say we have concavity of going this way and then another concavity going this way. And let's say they touch tangentially at this given point. The tangent line goes directly between them and then the radial vector line will point somewhere in this direction. It doesn't have to be perpendicular to the tangent line. It could be in any direction. But the idea is that it passes to the point where these two lines or these two paths intersect at one point. So what we can do is actually define this angle phi right here. And then using the idea of vertical lines, this will be the angle phi in the other concavity. So if you still don't see it, let's look back at this picture right here. So this is the concavity of the curve in this direction. So that will be the concavity of the curve of this one. So this will be... The, that previous example. And if we drew the radial vector, this will be the radial vector. And then this will be the tangent line. And the angle that is created is phi. So this will be phi. But if we switch concavity of that curve, we're going to do this curve, and then this line over here, which is the radial vector. And then the tangent line, this angle right here is going to be phi. So basically, when you switch concavity, all you're doing is looking at the vertical angle of the angle phi. So in the limiting case, so this is the angle, this is the picture we were looking at before. That very, very small parallelogram is actually right in the center of this point. So if we let that go to zero, it's actually going to be a, a very, very small point, which allows us to say that when the particle switches concavity, the angle of phi is just the vertical angle between radial vector and the tangent vector. So that basically allows us to simplify what angles are made with the various concavities of the paths. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too complicated, but if you want to derive this on your own, say you don't want to memorize any of this stuff, the main thing to remember is this relationship, that the angle phi is directly across the angle or the length delta s, so this right here. So delta phi is directly across from that, and then therefore you could say that this angle is phi. That is probably the best way to remember this and try to apply this to your problems. So now what I'm going to do is actually lay out each case and tell you what angle phi is in each case. So I listed out the eight different possibilities of phi. So you could try to memorize these, but I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to actually figure out phi given any path that is given in a problem. So as we said before, if the concavity switches for the curve, then we can use this idea of vertical angles to define phi. So this curve right here switches concavity over here. So we could say that this angle right here is just a vertical angle of this one. And that goes for the same for these two and these two and these two. And one thing to notice is that some of these paths are very similar. So let's take this one for example. This path goes like this, and this path over here goes in the same orientation. And if we look at the angle, which is phi right here, that is the same angle over here. So if you look at these vertical lines and these vertical lines over here, they're basically the same thing in terms of the angle where the angle is. So that's another thing to point out. And an easier way to point out phi, so let's say we have a perfect circle and we define the ori origin right here. So let's look at this radius right here. So this is going to be tangent right there. So if we create a vertical line. This, is, this concavity on this side of the circle is the same as this one over here. So we could say that this angle phi is there. 
And then if we look some time later, we're going to have some tangent line like that. And this right here is very similar to this path over here. So we could say that this angle is phi as well. And if you keep doing that, you're going to find that this right here is the same as this one over here. So we could say that this angle is phi and so forth. So a general pattern, so if we drew each radius and each tangent line, we could say that the angle phi is the angle at which the radial vector makes with the tangent line that sweeps in this motion. If you go on, so the angle is always to the left of the radius if the concavity is shown in this direction. So if you drew this radial vector, phi will be in this direction. So it's like phi is moving along in that direction. So you could say that this angle right here is phi and this angle right here is phi right here. So that is an easier way to find phi. Just remember that, just imagine this, this is actually r rotating with time. So this is phi and then some time later it's gonna create this angle and phi is still to the left of the radial vector. So this could be phi and then you can repeat the process for any given concavity of the curve. So hopefully that helped you. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. This is a very confusing topic in my opinion. Um, so I really tried my best to explain it as well as I can. But once you get this down, the orientation of phi, it becomes more and more simple. So if you're still confused, I just try to rewatch the video and hopefully it gets to you that way. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.